This forlorn and pathetic little whistle stop on the Burlington Northern Santa Fe tracks is in uh, Victorville, California. I had to open with that clip of Mason Gaffney, the professor who dares to venture where other professors fear to tread. It was my privilege to edit the essays by a dozen authors from around the world who culled the massive archive of Mason Gaffney's lifetime's work to apply the insights that they derive to the pressing social, economic and environmental issues of the day. On several occasions I had the pleasure of being the guest at Mason and Tish Gaffney's hilltop home amidst the orange groves of Riverside. Mason escorted me into the urban jungle in California to investigate the economics of land speculation. The land is not as stable. The hillside above you is likely to slump down on you someday. There are lots of problems. Why do people build up here when there's flat land down below? We climbed a mountain together. Well, actually, we rode a cable car to investigate the economics of land speculation in the Mojave Desert. If these people want to live here, that's fine. And use the water, that's fine. But it's our water, federal water. And they should pay for it. If they paid an economic price, instead of being subsidized, it would uh, do a great deal to lower the national debt. Mason is that rare academic, the professor who doesn't pull his punches. So when I asked him why economics had been compromised, he didn't mince his words. Universities have been endowed by major rent collectors and land speculators and uh, beneficiaries of government largesse. Stanford University, for example, was financed by Leland Stanford, whose fortune came from enormous land grants given to the Southern Pacific Railway. Cornell was financed by Ezra Cornell, who made his fortune during the Civil War. Uh, stringing wires behind General Grant. The University of Chicago was funded by John D. Rockefeller, the uh, oil baron and monopolist. And so it goes from university to university. Naturally, I wanted to know what could be done about this. Controversially for our secular society, Mason suggested that it was time for religion to intervene. But there have been periods in our history when uh, a lot of people got, got the word, got their character, through locally supported churches. And uh, it may be we need to come back to something more like that. I know that all our contributors will join me in expressing our profound appreciation to Mason for the lifetime's dedication to the George's cause. Mason's work has contributed to our understanding of precisely why things are wrong with our civilization. And as it happens, my next book is on the rise and fall of civilizations. Naturally, I'll consult Henry George and progress and poverty on that theme. But as usual, Mason had some very interesting insights into why civilizations collapse giving me something to ruminate about. I believe historically you see it in the obsession of decaying civilizations with monuments to the dead, the uh, pyramids being an extreme example. But the temple of Angkor Wat is probably an example. The pyramids of the Mayan civilization are probably an example. The uh, tombstones of rich people are probably an example. Uh, the occupation of more and more of the land of China by cemeteries is an example. The fact that Milwaukee has more land in cemeteries than it has in all of industry is an example. Uh, these are uh, generic thoughts, but it's something I intend to look into in, in for my next article.